ราไปอยู่ตรงไหนนั่นรอเลยโอ้งโอ้งที่มันข้างหน้าเนี่ยOkay, if you're heading into a race right now, we're heading into marathon season, and you don't quite think you're ready, do these three things, and I promise you they've always worked for me, and I'm pretty sure at least one of them could work for you. But I'm getting this type of comment in the comments below. The Maranonia is setting in, trying to work out whether the race day adrenaline, taper, and running with others will be enough. Of a boost to help me stick a goal pace, even if not, have to enjoy the privilege of being healthy enough to give it a go. Do it for those who can't, which is a great comment. Another comment: I'm six weeks out, and ITB is killing me. I can't do three miles without sharp pain. I did a half marathon in the build-up, and I ended up finishing in 2:13. Lackluster performance, likely due to IT band syndrome. Any advice or tips to salvage this season? So what essentially you're getting there is a lot of nerves, a lot of anxiety, a lot of probably phantom injuries. And I'm not saying all of them are phantom injuries, but it's amazing once you get towards race day, all of a sudden that niggle becomes a little bit bigger than it was before. You were able to handle it when you couldn't see the race, but now you can see the race. It's a bigger concern. It's natural to have those types of things, but here's how I deal with it. Number one, what about if it was a few hundred years ago, and I was a gladiator going into the Colosseum, and I'm about to go up against life or death situation, kill or be killed? What would I do? And I know that might seem dramatic, but if we were born in a different time, imagine Russell Crowe in the Gladiator saying, "Oh, my Achilles, it's a bit of tendinopathy or tendinosis. I'm not sure. I'm not quite going to be able to go to the battle tomorrow." Think about how absurd that situation is, and it helps relieve the tension. But it also helps you go, okay, man or mouse, are we actually having this or not? And that leads me nicely onto the next point. <laughs> In all my sports games as a kid, whether we were going to play football against another school, cricket, badminton, even chess, we'd be in the school bus together, and it would literally be like looking at each other: Are we having this today or what? Are we having it? And it's exactly the same advice I give myself on race morning and in the sessions leading up to it. Am I having this today or what? Or are you going to let the session or the race get the better of you? Are we having it or not? And that kind of mentality—it's like I don't care if all the stars are not aligned. I don't care if there's not been the perfect build-up. I'm going to have the race of the training. I'm going to have the race of my life, no matter whether the training has been perfect or not. That helps you out in the situation. The third piece of advice, and I got this from speaking in front of large groups of people for business. It's a terrifying experience initially, and to go out there and walk, you might be the type of person who can stand up in the pub and tell a joke in front of your mates. You might be able to speak to a lot of your mates or get up and do best man speeches are very very difficult as well. But speaking in front of a, a bunch of people who need to grab their attention. And then speak to different people from different walks of life, at different senior levels in maybe your company or other companies. Difficult to do and takes some practice, and you need to then get good at it. But you're often not given the chance, so it's important for me to learn this lesson. And it was literally a book that I read about Al Pacino's life and how. He attacks the stage. He's much more of a theatre guy. He loves performing at the theatre way more than movies. When he got into movies, it was literally just to pay the bills. The theatre is where his heart is, and he attacks those situations like I am Al Pacino, and goes onto the stage and gives it because he commands the room. And remember, he's not always been the person that we know today. Not always been the person he was 20 years ago. At the start of his career, he was like everybody else, nobody. But the way he elevated his esteem, and the way he elevated his confidence to go on stage and give performance after performance, night after night after night, you can imagine how much energy you need and how much endurance you need to put the same play on 30 days in a row to attack that and 
give, no matter whether the doubts are creeping in or not, to give the performance can be incredibly useful to you as a marathon runner or as a distance runner. It's really powerful just to be, hold on a second, I'm Lee Grantham. And it's happening today because that's what I do and that's who I am. And if that is your identity, like you already identify as a runner, so you're somebody who gets up and runs, recovery runs, easy runs, hard runs, long runs, interval sessions, hill runs, you do it no matter what the weather is doing outside and no matter how you're feeling. If you then identify as somebody who executes on performance, who executes a race because that's who you are and that's what you do, that is another extremely powerful tool in your armory as a distance runner. And you can imagine how that crosses into every aspect of your life. So be Al Pacino.